Hey parents, welcome to Hillside Kids Online. Enjoy watching together as a family and don't forget to use the Parent Q app throughout the week to continue with today's lessons and be the parent that you want to be. It all starts now. Merry Christmas, everyone. I know, I know, it may seem a little early in the season for it, but I mean, I love Christmas and I don't care who knows it. Lucky for me, that's what we're talking about all month long here in the clubhouse. I mean, I love the lights. I love the presents. I love the music. It's Christmas. What is not to love? And the best part of all of it is the reason why we celebrate Christmas in the first place. If you don't know what I'm talking about, let's take a look at the Life app for this month. The Life app is Christmas, and Christmas means celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. Say that with me. Christmas means celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. It's true. When it comes down to it, Christmas is about one simple thing, celebrating Jesus. And if you need a reminder of why we celebrate Jesus and why he is God's greatest gift, let's just take a look at the memory verse. The memory verse for this month is, Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Luke 2.11 Let's all say that together. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Luke 2.11 If you are still trying to figure out and try to understand how Jesus is a gift to us, let's go hear about a very important promise that God made in the past that came true for all of us. Let's go check it out. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6. Hey guys, it's Miss Rachel. I'm so excited to be with you today. And we have a brand new month, which means a new theme. And I'm sure all of you are very excited for this month because it's December, which means it's Christmas. This month, we are going to learn all kinds of amazing things about Jesus because we're celebrating that he came to earth. Now, I wanted to start today with looking at the Bible. The Bible is the coolest book that you will ever read. It's not just one book that somebody sat down to write, but there are 66 different books in the Bible, and God spoke to different people and told them what to write. And all of those writings were combined into one book. Now, in the Bible, we have history, we have letters, we have great stories, and we have poetry. Now, the Bible is all of those things, and most of all, it's about God's people, about God's relationship with people, with people back then and with us now. So let's just do a quick recap of some of the things that are in the Bible. When God created the, the world, he made people first, Adam and Eve. God parted the Red Sea so Moses could lead his people to freedom. He helped Joshua and the Israelites win the battle of Jericho in the Promised Land. He was with David when David fought against the giant Goliath. He inspired David and others to write words of hope, which we can find in the book of Psalms. He gave Esther the courage to approach the king and speak up for her people. The Bible is full of all kinds of amazing stories of people with great faith and great bravery. But... 
There's also a lot of stories of people who were not so faithful and not so brave. We're gonna talk a little bit about those. So in the Bible, in all of those stories about God's people, we find out that God's people made a lot of promises to God. Do you ever make promises to your parents? I promise that I'll clean my room. I promise that I'll be nicer to my brother or sister. I promise I'll get my homework done. I promise I'll practice this. Sometimes do you not keep those promises? I mean, in my house, sometimes those promises get broken. I don't know about your house, but this is what would happen to the Israelites. They would promise God, oh God, we will follow you and we will do exactly what you say because we know that you have our best interest in mind and you want the best for us. And do you think that they always followed that? Mm -mm. Their promises, like in this, would sometimes not stick. So they would say, God, we're gonna follow you. Mm -mm. God, we know that you want the best for us and we're going to trust you with everything that we are. No. God, I'm so sorry we screwed up and I know that you helped us, but we're gonna do better next time, I promise. It went on and on and on like this. And the Israelites would make promises to God and say, we'll do better and we love you. And then they would turn around and they would break their promises. But God was still faithful. He sent all kinds of people to rescue the Israelites because when they broke their promises, they did things that actually hurt them. And bad things happened to them. Like they got attacked by their enemies and their cities got taken over because they weren't listening to God and doing what he told them to do. But God sent people like judges to rescue them and help them and try to lead them in the right direction. He sent kings like King David to help lead the people and to help guide them and to help them understand what they should do and how they should worship him. He sent prophets, people who literally would listen to what God said and say, hey, this is what God says you should do, or this is what you need to do in order to follow God or to be safe or to not be taken over by your enemies. Still, even through that, they continued to break their promises and have them not stick. So that's just kind of a history of what was going on back then with God and his people, the Israelites. But let's take a look and see how it works the other way when God makes promises to them. So we have all of our broken promises on the floor and I'm gonna have Nora read some of God's promises that he made to the Israelites and to us in the Bible. And then Marin is gonna see if those promises stick this time. So Nora, why don't you read the first promise? You will come and pray to me. I will listen to you. Jeremiah 29, 12. Jeremiah 29, 12, awesome. So that's our first promise. And God promises that whenever we reach out to him and pray, that he will always listen to us. And that's an amazing promise that we know anytime we ask God for something, that we pray to him that he is always listening. So Mary, let's see if those promises stick this time. All right, nice job. Okay, Nora, while she's doing that, why don't you read the second one? He gives us gives us power to those who are weak. Isaiah 40, 29. Okay, so Maren, let's see if our promises stick on the O. Okay. And while she's sticking God's promises on the O, Nora, why don't you read the third promise from God? I know the plans I have for you, announces the Lord. I want you to enjoy the success. I do, do not plan to harm you. I will give you hope for years to come. Jeremiah 29, 11. Awesome, thank you. So here's something that's really important to know. 
Back then, when the Israelites would sometimes disobey God, they would follow other gods of all the other people that were living around them. Now, those gods, those gods weren't good. Those gods would do good things for you if you did what they said. But if you disobeyed those gods, they would actually do bad things to you. Or that's what they believed, at least. And God is trying to say, hey, I'm, I'm the real God. I'm not like these pretend gods who act like people who are mean when you're mean to them. I am the true God and I want only good things for your life and I will only lead you in a good direction and I will never have anything bad happen to you that comes from me. So Marin, why don't we see if the promises stick on the P? Great job. Okay, Nora, why don't you read the fourth promise from God while she's sticking those on? Be strong and brave. Do not be afraid. Do not lose hope. I am the Lord your God. I will be with you whenever you go. Joshua 1, 9. Awesome. Thank you. So, Marin, why don't we stick your last promises that you've got, God's promises, on the E. God says that he will be with us wherever we go. That's an amazing promise that we can remember. That no matter what happens in our life, no matter where we are going, no matter what we are facing, God says, I will absolutely never leave you. You can always trust that I'm going to be there. And do his promises stick? They sure do. We have spelled out the word H-O-P-E, which is hope. Now, hope is what we have when we've experienced that God keeps his promises over and over and over again. But we're not going to even begin to understand what hope is like until we experience the biggest promise that he ever gave to us. And to talk about that, I'm going to read you one more verse. This is from Isaiah 9, verse 6. A child will be born to us. A son will be given to us. He will rule over us, and he will be called Wonderful Advisor and Mighty God. He will also be called Father who lives forever and Prince who brings peace. God's biggest promise, not only to the Israelites, but to us, was that he would send his son to earth, to die on the cross for our sins, to save us, all of humanity, and the whole world. Now, when we understand that and we have our faith in Jesus, that's where our biggest hope can come from. Now, our bottom line for today is that we can have hope because God keeps his promises. We're going to learn so much more about that this month. But remember, when you think about Christmas time and all the fun that we have and thinking about all the ways that we celebrate and about baby Jesus coming to earth, think about the fact that that is one of the biggest promises that God has kept for us in sending his son Jesus to earth. And as we go about the rest of our month and year and the years to come, we know that we can continue to trust God because he always keeps his promises. Let's pray. Dear God, we know that no matter what our promises are and that they don't always stick, that you are faithful because we can trust you no matter what. We know that you will always keep your word and we can have hope because you keep your promises. We are most thankful for the promise that you kept to sending Jesus as our Savior. Thank you for sending him. We love you. We praise you. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope you guys have a great rest of the week, and we will see you soon. Through Isaiah, God promised that he would send a Savior. And that promise came true when God sent Jesus. Because God was faithful to keep his promises in the past, we have hope that God will keep his promises in the future. We can have hope because God keeps his promises. Say that with me. We can have hope because God keeps his promises. This year, a lot of things probably looked different than what you expected for you and for your family. 
Christmas might look different too. But the real meaning of Christmas, it never changes. And it's something to celebrate, no matter what. Remember how God keeps His promises. Remember what Jesus did for you. Remember that God's promises always stick. And you can have hope in any situation. Again, our memory verse for this month is Luke 2.11. It reminds us of how God kept his promise when he sent Jesus. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord, Luke 2:11. Let's pray and let's ask God to help us with these concepts. Everyone close your eyes, bow your heads, and let's all reflect on these words. Dear God, Thank you that you always keep your promises. You promised to send a savior and you gave us Jesus, just like you promised. Help us remember that we can trust you and we can have hope no matter what, because you always keep your promises. We pray all of these things in Jesus name. And everybody said, amen. Remember whether this is the most over-the-top extra Christmas ever or it's a small celebration with your family. No matter what happens, we can have hope because God keeps His promises. God is with us through Christmas and He's with us every day of the year, just like He promised. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let her be seen, her King. Let every heart prepare Him room, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing. Yeah.